Lovely to see some familiar people and some unfamiliar people. Some people who've been here all day and Sharon, who's just joining at 5 a.m. <laughs> what a trooper. <laughs> can't, can't miss this session. <laughs> Good to see you or at least hear you. Guys, if you've got the ability to put on your camera and unmute your microphone, please do. If you're in a quiet place, um, please unmute yourself. It makes a huge difference to the quality of the conversation that we can have. Um, I'm really looking forward to having a conversation. Um, my intention is not to talk at you for 30 minutes. My intention is to demonstrate what I'm talking about, which is how to, what are some of the ways to build professional relationships in online video calls. Um, in the next um, 27 minutes, I'm expecting to take you through a couple of activities, which I hope will demonstrate what I'm talking about. Um, there's a whole bunch of things we could do with this time. Of course, there are loads of different ways to uh, build professional relationships in online video conversations, some of which are... Um, sorry, I'm being distracted by the fact I, it looks as if I can't send you all a message, but I can. I can send you all a message. It's just that the waiting room is throwing me. When I run these kind of events, I never have waiting room switched on because it means that as host, I've got to keep one eye on the waiting room and clicking the button to let people in and the other eye on you guys. <laughs> and it's just stretching my capacity to do it all at once. As I said, um, I've just shared a, a message with you, uh, which is the slides, that if I was the kind of person who shared slides during uh, an online video meeting like this, they're the slides. So if you're the kind of person who wants there to be slides, slides are there. But I'm not principally going to be sharing slides. <laughs> what I'm going to be doing is inviting you to, to talk to each other. So at the beginning of this session, I invited you to join a breakout room, or most of you who are here early, join a breakout room to have a quick conversation with whoever you found yourself with. Was there anyone for whom that was their first experience of Zoom breakout rooms? If so, please shout. Okay. So we all understand what Zoom breakout rooms are and how they work. The idea is that you can have small group conversations. Now, I appreciate that small group conversations, particularly small, forced small group conversations, are not everybody's cup of tea. In this session, this half hour session, we will use the randomized breakout room feature. That means that if you don't want to join the breakout rooms, you need to let me know send me a chat message or tell me as we get started. Because if you don't join, then someone else is going to be sitting there on their own, twiddling their thumbs. And you could say, that's a little bit rude. So just let me know and I can exclude you from the breakouts. The idea of starting with breakout rooms before we even start is to, well, a bunch of things happen. One of the things is people get to talk to other people. That, After all, that's what we do when we join an in-person event. Typically, we say hello to the person who's sitting next to us. We say, some, say something to the person in the bar. If it's a networking style event, like a conference, we don't have to, of course. We can go and sit at the back and just wait for the event to start. But typically, people use that time to make some connections. So the idea of doing it at the beginning of this session is to simulate that kind of experience. Hopefully that makes some kind of sense. The next thing we're going to do is talk about some of the technical factors that can really help to build professional relationships in online video calls like this one. And there are technical factors. Technical factors aren't the most important thing but they're a crucially enabling thing. You can't do this stuff without the technical stuff. So there's at least one person on the call at the moment who's been completely unable all day to engage in the breakout room conversations, not because she didn't want to, but because she can't from where she is switch on 
audio or video. She can hear us, but all she can do is write messages in the chat. That must be super frustrating when there are conversations you want to be part of. So be, there are three things I'd like you to pay attention to in terms of yourself and in terms of whoever you're going to be talking to in the next breakout. Pay attention to, can you and they be heard? Can they be heard clearly? That usually means, are they using a headset? And is there a, a fairly quiet background behind them? So can they be heard? Second thing to pay attention to is, can they be seen? Now, being seen can mean a few different things here. But what I mean by being seen in this context is, is there enough light in the space where they are so that you can see their facial features? Can you actually engage with them? Can you see their eyes? Can you see their smile? Now, that typically means there needs to be plenty of light. And backgrounds can make a difference as well. If people are using a background that is very distracting and they disappear into it, then that's important as well. And the third thing I'd like you to pay attention to is posture. Notice what happens if I sit forward like this and contrast it with what happens mm -hmm. if I do this. Which is easier to engage with? So in this next breakout session, you're going to be paying attention to the whether your partner can be heard, whether they can be seen and their posture. And you're going to give each other some feedback because sometimes it's really hard to know, particularly with sound quality, but it's really hard to know how you're coming across. So you're going to be break in breakout rooms of about three people. So the couple of people who've said they don't want to be in the breakouts, um, don't worry, just don't join your breakout because nobody will be left on their own. Um, in your breakouts, you're going to have about three minutes to chat to each other about can you be heard, can you be seen, and how's your posture in terms of occupying your square. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, opening the rooms now. Let's see how this goes. Everybody's coming back in the room, so uh, Great. Let's, let's see what happens next. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. Who learned something in that uh, short three minute activity? <laughs> Sam, go ahead. Um, I learned about um, the idea of having horizontal blinds um, so that you can better adjust the natural light in the room more granularly because um, as well as it being too dark, uh, it can also be too bright. Mm -hmm. Um, and as Neil was saying, he's got all sorts of, um, sort of blinds that make it much easier to him to be able to adjust that. Um, Absolutely. Whereas I've just got a roll of blinds, so it's a bit less controllable. Yeah. Thank you. And Rebecca, what did you learn? Um, about the light. That is, yeah. uh, um, I better have my coat in the morning when I have lights uh, from both sides. Now it's uh, shadowing one side mm -hmm. of my face. <laughs> Yeah. So there's, there's lots you can do with light and it makes a huge difference. Who learned something different in that activity? Um, I can go. Um, go so I tend to monitor, uh, which is larger one, and I tend to look at my Zoom calls on that. But Antoinette um, pointed out that it's quite distracting when I'm not looking forwards and looking sideways. So I can try and make that adjustment. What I've learned over the last uh, several months, because I started doing remote working a long time ago, was I've got a, rather than, I've got my laptop on a, a riser, uh, which is about, would, would be focused on my lips. However, I've got a separate camera, which is actually at that height. So I can, and then it's also got, it's zoomable. So it's got different angles. So I can adjust it based on what I'm doing that's behind me. Um, and that works really well. Plus, I've got uh, several lights. So I've got lights on my board as well. 
so I can, I, and like um, Sam was saying, I've, I've got different blinds as well for, uh, for, for controlling external light. It's, these are just things I've, I've picked up as I've, uh, as I've <laughs> been, been working remotely. Yeah, so there's lots and lots to learn about the technical side of all yeah. this stuff. And because we've got limited time, I'm going to move us briskly along because great remote working is not just about the technology. It's also about the people. And in this next activity, I'm going to show you something that you can do which will help basically make all your meetings less boring. Would that be useful? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, some of you may have played this game with me before because I do it a lot in a lot of different activities, lots of different contexts, but it makes a huge different difference. Here's what you're going to do. In the next activity, you're going to be in pairs. And that's why I needed to know who wanted to be in and who didn't want to be in a pair, because you need to be in pairs for this activity to work. You're going to take it in turns to do two things. The first role is the role of talker. As the talker, you're going to be talking about something that is important to you for a minute. And you could talk about your work, you could talk about your family, you could talk about um, your hobbies, you could talk about a sports team, whatever you like. But um, you need to talk about something that's important to you. The second role that you're going to be playing is the role of listener. And as the listener, you're going to be you're going to be um, going through three different states. You're going to start by listening really well, nodding, smiling, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, all that stuff for 20 seconds. Then you're going to be visibly distracted. I mean visibly distracted. That's for that 20 one. seconds mm. and then you are going to go back to listening really well for 20 seconds can we ask questions now you can ask questions about the process by all means right so but when that person's like looking at something else can we ask them questions or have we just got to continue our talk you can do whatever you decide to do. Let's see what happens. Okay. Um, so for 20 seconds, you're going to be visibly distracted. And then the third 20 seconds, you're going to be, um, you're going to be listening really well again. So what I'm just about to do is put you into pairs. You're going to be timing yourself. So you'll see a, a stopwatch counting down 20 seconds um so times you time yourselves and then there will be a 60 second countdown at the end for you to mop up so now bear with me just a second while i move people who don't want to be in the breakout rooms out of pairs i'm just trying to find everybody bear with me it's just a little bit complicated because there's quite a long list of people here question Go ahead. So it's the presenter who's going to be visibly distracted whilst they're no, talking. No, it's the listener, listener. The listener who That's is fine. going to be visibly distracted. How brutal can we be in that? <laughs> 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 be brutal. Be brutal. as brutal as you'd love to be. Okay. Right. Just walk off. <laughs> walk off. <laughs> just leave. Just... So we do okay. it twice. So we switch the roles or we just So we switch one. the roles. So one person does it one way round and then you switch the roles. What let's hear from a couple of people. What happened when your listener was distracted? <laughs> it's just the worst experience ever, isn't it? Yeah. Well, when I was distracted, Carol started laughing just because I did this. <laughs> <laughs> what are you playing with? Tell me. <laughs> it looks something dubious in your hand. <laughs> what, is, what it looks like to me. Uh, 
He's, he's already started on his time appropriate beverage. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was part of his catheter. No, there is a school of people who believe drinking their own urine is extraordinarily healthy. And I think it's <laughs> that was that one. <laughs> who had a different experience when their listener was distracted? I couldn't even think of what to say at that point. I was so distracted. <laughs> It was I'm like sure. having a coaching session, wasn't it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else, Yuri. What was your experience? We were both distracted with the with this reminder that the time was over almost, and then uh, Paul forgot his topic. He couldn't continue. <laughs> So, so I had great fun as, as a listener uh, because Sylvia had uh, a great story about nutrition and here I start just eating garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I think she could even see the little bits of lasagna I was eating. <laughs> when it's in your teeth that we need to worry about. Sorry, Andrew, say again. It's when it's between your teeth that we need to worry. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. So the question is, is there a relationship between that activity and what normally happens in online meetings? Not just online, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what's yeah, the relationship? Most people, most people aren't present. Yeah. I think it's also in, uh, in live meetings, especially in like big meetings at the, uh, at the office, like people are doing something else. <laughs> Where I've been... <laughs> Yeah. Or long meetings too. Yeah. I, I, was at a, I was at a town hall today with 106 people and four screens were on. I can only assume everyone else was like gardening, having a lie down. <laughs> 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 and sorry, Henry, I didn't hear what you said a moment ago. I can't remember now, but they're, they're basically people generally aren't paying attention in online meetings. As, as we've just said, they're doing something else. Exactly. And the the absolute main reason that people don't turn on their cameras is because they're doing something else. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, there are reasons that people don't put their cameras on. You know, there are good reasons. But really, 99 times out of 100, it's because they're busy doing their email. Yeah, I've never done um, that. Never. Yeah. Yes. If you yeah. want to build strong relationships, put your camera on. Yeah. I'm just going to very quickly recap my big three messages. I've got this from Henry earlier on. He said, recap the three messages at the end. <laughs> my big three messages from this session. Pay attention to your digital body language. Can you be heard? Can you be seen? Are you occupying your square? Pay attention to your attention. Because your, the, the quality of your attention can determine the quality of another person's thoughts when you pay attention they think more clearly and they talk more clearly and that will make your meeting less boring and thirdly i appreciate it's not everybody's cup of tea but stuff happens when people are in small groups yeah when you're in big groups when you're in groups of 35 40 as we are now it's really hard to build relationships but when you get yourself into pairs and threes, you can talk to each other and stuff happens as a result. We're time up on this session. So in the chat, I'm sharing two pieces of information, my email address, if you have more questions for me, and a link to a guide to creating web events that connect, web events that create mm -hmm. powerful relationships, powerful connections. It's free download, so follow the link and you can grab that.